or not that's going to change, but already targeting some of those go-to picks for Liab, getting rid of the Bard on the side for Zaya Dragons. Yeah, Bard, huge playmaking tool for the side of Mocha and can also just, you know, slow down the momentum of the game if the Herald comes out early from Bajaya. I like the takeaway, it enables a lot of the melee engage heavy supports that Bajaya have opted into. But that being said, it's Chili, it's Chili's time to shine, and I'm wondering what he himself will whack out in the support pool. There we are, as we get rid of the Karma set on the side of Liab, as uh, we've seen that kind of been flexed over to Malon a couple times in particular, but a lot of just like comfort, favorite champion pickups getting taken here by Berzai, getting rid of the Zoe away from Rex, and getting rid of the Lee Sin from Doi Doi. Yeah, getting rid of the Lee Sin from Doi Doi, not really something would come to here all that often throughout this split. The uh, the race for Trundle is on. I really don't want to see either of these teams take it because <laughs> yes, it's a comfort pick for the pair of them, but at the same time, it is not one that has found a lot of success for either of these junglers. And this has been something that we've seen now time and time again when Liab opts to take red side. I don't know the exact you know match pickup, but because Liab has been playing so much more on red side when they do get the option to pick their side, uh, they give up this Graves pick time and time again and it ends up biting them because that then it's up to them to try and respond with an aggressive jungler, which luckily for them, Nidalee wasn't banned out. Yeah, Nidalee, of course, is very, very similar to like an AP version of the Graves. They like to farm, they like to rotate. They don't have much by way of CC, but they have a lot of follow-up damage if you can set up for them. I'm looking towards Galio or something like that to really facilitate the early aggressive invades kind of similar again just emphasis oh. on globaling and just you know supporting your jungler when they move aggressively but galio has been so good for mawan that i think bajaya would still like to run it even against something as awful as the pantheon but instead they say all right let's go ahead and lock in that syndra and for rex there is an opportunity here to try and get himself ahead in lane alongside doi doi but this is putting a lot of pressure on your mid jungle duo meanwhile though the ash gonna get locked in for k2 yeah, probably the first time in a very long time we've actually seen the uh, Ash slip through pick ban this late. Granted, it's second rotation for one of the teams, but still, uh, definitely a first pickable champion. And, well, we're going to do that classic handshake of Ash for Ezreal. It's fine. It's not great. It's a pretty snooze fest bot lane, let's be real. But it lets the supports do whatever the hell they want. And with Chili making his triumphant return, hopefully we'll see some magic happen. Uh, and for Mocha himself, he loves to roam, loves to get something like a bard. It has been banned out, but maybe we fall back onto stuff like the pike, especially now that you also have that Kench being banned out here in the second phase for Liao. Could also flex this Pantheon to support, but it isn't really something we've come to attribute to Mocha as a player. Uh, I do wonder if Liab will continue to ban out the uh, melee supports. Like, Braum probably goes alongside Kench, but... Uh, I guess we'll see what happens there. And now we're focusing on the top lane from the side of Bajaya. You take away Renekton, one of the safer blind picks. We've seen Kennen, we've seen Jace in the region. Kanji, of course, big carry player. Not really gonna default to a tank here, let's be real, that's why they banned Orn. And so we're just gonna have to wait to see what Liab run up in that top lane. All right, so we do see there is a possibility that this Pantheon could be going cool. to Mocha now with that Galio getting locked in. I like that. Um, as we said, Mocha loves to roam, so why not give him the semi-global? And again, this is just more support for Doi Doi to really carry from the jungle position. You go in for an early aggressive invade, you continue to pressure with it, and you can find yourselves just choking out the enemy jungler by having aggressive rotations from your mid, from your support, from your jungler, or even just four-man diving bot lane as soon as possible. Suddenly the uh, ban at the Thresh with the Lantern, the Banner of Tom Kent with the Devour, it's all making sense because Liab wants to be as aggressive as possible in the early game. And now the question becomes, what do you want to try and round out this composition with for Kanji? Because now you've seen Ozzy has shown his hand. It's going to be the Mordekaiser up toward top lane and then Chili on the Brawl. I think you can go with the Pocket Ergot here if you want. And that is also a lovely pick. I like it a lot. Um, anything that can 1v1 the Mordekaiser in <laughs> his ultimate is a good pick by me. All right, our first Fiora pickup of summer. It's going to be Kanji picking that up in top lane. And if there is a 
do or die strategy to come out here from Leah. This is pretty much it. Hyper aggression, level six, get Rex into those side lanes, cause havoc, and then try and snowball the game there. But it is up to them to be the proactive team. And you do not know Heartbreak until you're playing Mordekaiser and you get your death round parried by a Fiora W in lane. Really telegraphed on pretty much every spell from this mod, so it gives Kanji a lot of playmaking potential in that 1v1. It, expectations for the game though, yeah top lane's gonna be a 1v1, yeah those giants are gonna swing at each other, but the rest of the map is where the volatility happens. Expect the graves to farm, expect the bot lane and the mid lane just hang back for Vijaya, but then look for Liab to explode the game early. Global rotations, aggressive dives, it's all good for them and they have all the pieces ready and waiting to set that one up. Well, here we go. Liab versus Berjaya very much could be the decider between these two teams. Which team is going to be making it into playoffs? Liab need this win, and then they need Berjaya to lose the remaining game tomorrow. For Berjaya, they can lock in their playoff slot here, and now they're able to take down the Philippine rep of Liab Esports. And despite that first pick, Graves coming out of the gate swinging for the side of Vijaya, it's the jungler of Liab that I'm actually pointing a lot of my attention towards. You have that Galio to support the Nidalee, you have that Pantheon to further reinforce these creative invades, and yeah, it's going to be a bloodthirsty matchup around Doi Doi, who hasn't necessarily had the, uh, the hottest of splits so far. No, uh, when it comes to Liab shot calling, he's kind of been the, the go-to face alongside Mocha. And you even saw during that Machi game earlier today, a lot of questions came down to the decision-making from Doi Doi alongside Rex in particular, where, you know, Doi Doi was running down mid into a Azir that just pushed him into the tower. There's been a lot of mistakes from this jungle that needs to play at the top of his game if he wants to help lead this rookie squad. I mean, conversely, also think about your second favorite documentary series after Planet Earth in that Liab documentary that you continue to refer to. Because you see Doi Doi pulled around the map at his laner's whim. You have Kanji saying, bail me out, I need help top. You have the bot lane saying, look, come here. Doi Doi needs to be making proactive decisions for himself and dictate the pace of the game on this Nidalee. Because you have the advantageous 1v1, you have two globals ready to back you up, and the Nidalee, it is her playground in this early game. Yeah, especially when you're going up against someone like Enzo, which has been known even when he gets on something like like something like the Graves, especially here in summer. He's a bit timid when it comes to the aggression coming out of that Graves. Rarely do we actually see Enzo go for an invade unless his mid lane is absolutely dominant. Granted, he's usually playing Trundle, and Mawan is usually just hugging turret, so... Uh... Yeah, uh, not a lot to say in that regard for the aggressive invades uh, from the Bajaya jungler, but definitely do have to weather this early storm. A lot of volatility from the side of Liab. As we said, Kanji is just content to sit back, but the rest of the map needs to explode. And that early hawk shot, that early level two for the Ash Brawl, super, super crucial at just scouting out the Nidalee and buying a little bit of time for these laners to get themselves on the board. And unfortunately for Doido, it kind of prevents him, the mystique from coming out from this Nidalee, especially that he's being tracked and gives Berzaya that knowledge, like you mentioned, to keep a Aussie safe, where he's already in that 1v1 matchup where he doesn't want to fall behind early, as well as Malon to at least play on towards the side of the map where he feels comfortable. Yeah, do have just enough mana for the QE. Quick ball into stun from the Syndra. Uh, if Rex does step a little bit forward here. And you even had uh, Enso lurking around for a potential gank or counter gank should Doi Doi make his presence known. 
full clear from both junglers. Uh, red buff still up for the Nidalee and Golem still up for the uh, for the Graves. But not too much to be found in this early game unless... Uh, Don Mocha a little too far forward knowing that Enzo could have been on the bot side of the map. They decide to still push on forward. That's going to be the sudden landing onto Mocha. Does have Flash available to get himself back to safety. Still some damage to come through but it won't be enough to take him down just yet as Berzaya still not able to secure that first blood. Yeah, the Vishaya bot lane actually giving a lot of respect here in their summoner spell choices. That means no ignite. I guess you really want to cleanse that targeted point and click pantheon stun. But uh, yeah, not too much kill conversion there. Could be kill conversion here though. I okay, saw so Ozzy, he put down that ward for a quick sec and then maybe didn't check his map for much longer as he ended up having to force his flash to safety as Doi Doi saying, all right, you know what? Kanji needs to get ahead up in this matchup. We got to get the ball rolling on the Fiora and actually setting that up nicely for Kanji to get that push back toward him. Yeah, that is a really gorgeous freeze now coming out from the top laner of Liab. Issue is that if Enzo continues to path upwards and if you maybe see Mawan get unlocked just for a little bit, very, very easy to punish the Fiora for her comparatively weak early game and just kind of coordinate a big turret dive. That being said, Mordekaiser doesn't really contribute anything. Fiora parries the uh, very, very obvious Claw of Doom, and it's not necessarily the easiest of executions when Graves also can't auto-attack through towers. And you also saw there, we're starting to run out a little bit of that area for uh, the option for Berjaya to go for that effectively because Rex about to hit that level six on the gal. Yeah, I definitely do have to look for the map to open wide once that Galio gets access to the heroic entrance. That's why you see Doi Doi able to move aggressively, Mocha as well. No access to the global ult yet, but still just going to run up, roam up, and let his jungler run wild. Uh, and actually not put off at all by the fact he did his flash blown two minutes into the lane phase. Uh, and instead just continuing with the aggression on the Pantheon. We'll see, though, if he ever gets the opportunity to get unlocked from this bot lane. Because, unfortunately, Dawn, he ended up just going in directly toward that tier. So that Ezreal's not necessarily going to be trading a whole lot of damage back toward that Ash, which is still very efficient with a quick volley and Q combo. Yeah, the tier 2 boots rush from the Ash as well. Berserkus Greaves in a very good position overall as an item. Super cost efficient. A lot of attack speed there. And the additional move speed lets you chase down your enemies really, really hard. Difference being that Ash spikes really heavily on one item with Blade of the Rune King being her rush, while Ezreal needs two to really contest in any kind of damage dealing scenario. That's why we're not really looking at the bot lane, not looking at the top lane, look at the jungle mid matchup and look how these two do clash into each other. And you see here, here's the issue. This bot lane getting pushed on in gives Pryo back toward Berjaya and Enzo could look to maybe try and get this dragon underway, but has to be careful. Level six now online for Rex could easily try and turn around one of these little skirmishes in the river. Yeah, late game Ash, late game Graves, late game Morden, Syndra even, all really difficult to deal with the Liab, especially if they get baited into some of the more conventional 5v5 kind of team fights that Berjaya have loved committing to. Uh, so Liab, you see them trying to pressure an early Drake as soon as possible, get access to that early Elder, that early Soul, any kind of mid-game win condition, while Ezreal is big, while Fiora is big, while Galio is big, is really helpful for this team to actually flourish and look for an early close. Let's see here, Dragon's been available now for the last couple of minutes and still no real setup just yet, just trying to get Vision on down. K2 though, We'll be hitting level 6 soon, alongside Chili with that Braum. Maybe we'll start to see a little bit of pressure come out from Rajaya. As Banji death actually realm? already into the Death Realm, did not use the parry. Malon's coming on over. Rex is way too late to the party if he tries to respond. And unfortunately, that's going to be Kanji just getting taken down. First blood over to Malon. All right, Kanji, you didn't parry the Death Realm. You didn't parry the Unleash Power. Not sure what you parried there, but it probably wasn't the greatest of spells. That being said, though, Vijaya, a huge commitment top, opens up a window of opportunity for Liab to respond in turn with a big Infernal Drake rotation. So there we go. It's going to be at least the first dragon on the board here for Liab, and they get uh, doi doi. Get a little bit too close for comfort there himself, but there you go. Dragon secured. Rift Herald, though, going to be started off here by Berjaya in response. Yeah, really crucial that that kill and rotation came up around the eight minute mark. It means the bot lanes don't need to lane swap. It means that you now see a pretty free herald for Berjaya. And if they can just funnel gold aggressively 
into the Syndras if she gets her level 11 plus Luden Spike sooner, or into the Ash. We can actually see them go blow for blow in an otherwise pretty precarious early game. So then my, my question is right now for Virgaya, we already started to see a little bit of this game starting to slip from the grass, already losing out by a thousand gold as well as that first kill. When do we want to start seeing action here from Liab? Yeah, do have Rex on level 6 and Mocha about to hit the same. Yeah, definitely do want to start to see Doi Doi move aggressively in for an invade with the reinforcement of his mid and support. Uh, that being said though, you mentioned it before, Vijaya just perma prio bot lane pushing in, not really enabling the roam from Mocha. And with one of those big heavy roam centric laners held down, it does make some of these more creative paths into the enemy jungle just that little bit scarier to commit to for an otherwise pretty timid jungler in Doi Doi. And he also saw Mocha's trying to set up for a possible play. Rexo's kind of giving it away with the fact that there is a ward down in toward that river brush, and at least they'll be able to secure Scuttle, but we're starting to see a little bit of inactivity come out from Lee Apple. We really need to start seeing these plays come out from this squad. Yeah, definitely need to see the Nidalee get on the board early, otherwise you fall into just kind of being a siege reinforcement for the Ezreal with an occasional heal from the Athenes kind of, uh, kind of bot. Sneaking in here with a Galio threatening a collapse as well is, you know, a good attempt at, at getting some early action down, but no real commitment, no hard commit, and again, this cleanse from K2 really paying dividends, otherwise you just eat the empowered Pantheon W into a Galio follow-up into one very dead Ash. And it seems like instead of trying to go for those aggressive plays early, Liab are just going to go ahead and decide, all right, well, maybe we'll wait for the next dragon fight. But then you got to wonder, all right, is that dragon fight going to be right around the time Malon's going to hit, you know, level 11, also get his Ludens online, and that Syndra gets really scary. Yeah, the Syndra single item spike is huge, and so is the Ash relative to the Ezreal. We're basically playing the waiting game for Dawn to stack the Muramana, get his Triforce or his Gauntlet, probably Triforce, uh, and honestly, Liab now, they need to pull an aggressive trigger fairly quickly if they're gonna actually make a case for themselves. And you got a question, you know, is the mental currently there for Liab overall? Again, you lost earlier a heavy stomp coming out from Machi, and now you are literally playing for your postseason lives in this matchup. This is a must victory. You lose here. Season's pretty much over at that point. You're playing for consolation prizing, uh, feeling good you win tomorrow's game up against Resurgence. But outside of that, there's nothing left for this team. Yeah, backs against the wall, especially since uh, I actually had a good conversation with the coach of Resurgence who said, all right, our aims for this week, just ruin Liab's playoff chances. No. That's it. <laughs> That's Jensen. <laughs> nothing else, just... That's yep. Jensen in almost plans here, just trying, you know... Put a, put a wrench into Liab's plan. Very similar to what we saw last split, too. Uh, back in spring, they were actually the one team to give a win over to Liab, and Liab were, again, a game away from trying to make a playoff tiebreaker happen, and they just uh, actually make it into playoffs because they actually did play that tiebreaker. Definitely do have to look at Liab as just really needing to pull out everything here. Their fate is in their hands, but at the same time, they need to be that little bit more desperate, that little bit more proactive, and show that they really want this. Now you see Collapse, though, coming out from the Giant Dragon. Flash on forward. Mocha's going to get caught out. He doesn't have a Flash himself. In comes the Galio Ultimate. Can they turn it back around? Two-man taunt going to come out from Rex. Gets the wards. The wind's down, and Doi Doi finds his target. And there's your teleport from Kanji to join in on the fight. In comes that grass, but not going to actually land, as it's a nice parry. Still, Malon, very scary on this Syndra, but Liab are able to strike back with their first three kills on the board. Yeah, and immediately you're seeing the global comp pay dividends. What looked like a clear-cut engage onto Mocha. He eats the Ash Arrow, can't throw up that E. What turned from a 3v1 into a 4v3 was just magical here from the side of Liab. They find their way in, they split the fight remarkably, and they turn this around. So finally you get to see the response that can come out of this Galio. Still have to note though, 
Ludens finished off here for Malon, and we are about to have our Mountain up and available, and he still has that Unleashed Power, so still a scary situation, especially if Doi Doi gets caught out by one combo. Scout of the Week not going to land, but in comes the ultimate. With the healing, we'll be able to survive, but no, he won't! Gets shut down immediately from Malon, and we said that Syndra is lethal. Yeah, that Nidalee getting a couple of kills off of that previous skirmish made me think, okay, Liab now on the board, but no matter how fed she gets, Nidalee always pretty squishy, and that means if you're ever sat below 60% health, you are one Syndra combo away from dead. Doi Doi gets a little bit too ambitious trying to start up that nice sidestep on the QE from the Syndra, but it's not enough. The isolated damage of the max, ranks, max rank Q as well from the Syndra really dealing just a ton uh, to Doi Doi here on the Nidalee. And just when they have a little bit of wind in their sails, it seems like Berjaya are able to diminish it instantly. That also allows Berjaya to get themselves their first dragon of the game and prevent Liab from stacking that immediately as we do have an Ocean Soul to start things off. Liab, though, might be looking for a pinch here onto K2. In comes that Pantheon, and that's what you need to do. Take down your carry immediately, and still looking for more here underneath the tower dive as Chili is going to get taken down himself. Doi Doi finding another kill. Yeah, good coordinated dive there coming out from Liab, but actually a trade back onto Rex as he tries to make his way up for the collapse of the Galio ultimate. So no Galio ultimate available. Malon and Enzo now peeking around the corner. Ultimate back up, and Kanji has to be careful on that Fiora. Still pretty squishy at this point. Won't lose the first tower just yet, but only going to take one more minion wave to secure that for Liab. Yeah, looking at the item spikes we have right now available, Ludens for the Syndra, that beautiful breakpoint where she can kill anyone. And here's how this one played out. Rex just trying to fish for an additional collapse, really, you know, reinforce his team. And then E into a wall. Classic. We, we, we love to see it. I don't know if uh, we like to see it. <laughs> there was something. There was, there was something there. And then, yeah, just the Galio face slamming the wall. With that, though, Kanji was able to at least pick up the first tower of the game. And that has equaled out the gold overall. You see your gold graph still pretty much dead even. But that does mean second Rift Herald of the game is going to go in favor of Berjaya as Kanji rotates to the bot side of the map. Yeah, and while we said that Liab needed to be proactive early, they need to do a lot in this early to mid game, uh, there's actually a late game win condition of the Fiora. That Herald, though, again being popped mid for the second time this game. See though, because Mocha is on the support Pantheon, can't eat up too much damage. And that's gonna be Berjaya able to open up the mid portion of the map now, taking down the first tier tower. Yeah, tier one mid, very, very important to get when you're running an Ash comp, just lets you fish for picks more aggressively, shoot an arrow from across the map, all of that good stuff. Uh, so yeah, we were talking about the fact Liab need to be proactive early to mid, Nidalee, Ezreal, all those two items kind of, uh, kind of shenanigans that comes through. But Fiora is a late game win condition if Kanji can kind of replicate his mid laners split push successes and do his own thing in a side lane. So overall, what we're expecting then from Liab is they'll be good when it comes to these skirmishes, but 5v5s, like we mentioned back at Champions Select for the team's play style, maybe not in their favor. Yeah, Liab's uh, strengths in oh, this Kanji. game can be up. That's aggressive, Kanji. Loader didn't realize the rest of the team was coming around the corner, ends up using the para immediately. And Anzi stuck right up against the wall, is able to prevent the grand challenge from being finished off and Kanji getting caught out. Yeah, Anzi may be a little bit apprehensive about that 1v1 he himself adopted into, but it's nice. Yeah, you saw the fact that um, the Fiora just walked next, sorry, the, the Mordekaiser walked next to the wall. You can't proc the Fiora passive when she, uh, has the mark facing against Terrain, of course. That's why Trundle used to be such a good pick into Fiora, because you pillar behind you, and she couldn't touch the mark that was next to the pillar. Um, and yeah, just cool. Bad read by the Liab top laner, and good collapse by the side of Bajaya. And even though you saw four members of Bajaya, Liab not really able to get much else on the map, other than a little bit of ward coverage into the jungle on the top side of the map. Yeah, and Bajaya's momentum here isn't spectacular but at the same time they have good single item spikes they have a fantastic mid game and you look at Lee up essentially the Ezreal build is what makes me think all right this team is good at two items and then kind of afk until six items mm -hmm. 
that's the thing about Liav's comp, is that it spikes mid-game, it spikes here, and then it does nothing relative to Pajayas for about 10-15 extra minutes. And unfortunately for Liab, when we've seen them in a position where they need to turtle down and prevent teams from closing out games, it doesn't happen and they get caught out time and time again. Mocha though, able to get himself back to safety with that shield being put up. A decent spear coming out from Doi Doi persuades Berjaya to prevent going further with their fight. You know, I don't know if it's just Delulu not being here, but I am pleasantly surprised that we've seen neither support face check for Vision and die so far this game, because that has been the name of the game for both of these players so far this split. And turns, unfortunately here though, for Kanji, he himself needs to be a little bit careful, but with that pressure being brought over toward him on the top side of the map, as well as some Vision, they loudly have to go ahead and sneak in there for their second dragon of the game. And I really like this from Liab because it's the same thing that happened when Kanji got ganked top. The issue is that I don't know if it's insanely coordinated or if it's just Kanji again opting into a weird situation. Because you saw him die 1v4 bot as well with no real objective to trade back on the map for the team. Uh, mm -hmm. But they did very well to use the Fiora's pressure there and yeah, essentially trade Fiora's flash for a second Drake. And you see him again. <laughs> In a brush, Ozzy Malon nearby. Is Kanji want to go for this? You have a lot of pings coming out. Mocha could try and make a play. You also have the rest of Liab looking to collapse here, but they need to pull the trigger immediately. Doido is going to get spotted out there on a ward. They're taking a long time. In Mocha. we go. Teleport on top, immediately onto Malon, and they're able to get that stun and beautifully done here by Kanji and the crew to be able to pick up the kill. Meanwhile, though, bot lane, it was Dawn getting taken on down now into the death round 1v1. Ozzy up against Kanji. Unfortunately for Ozzy, the rest of his team is just a little bit too late to the party, but he's able to buy enough time. Chili ends okay too, decides though to back off. Yeah, any team with Braum rotates around the map really, really slowly. Bajaya, they are late on the uptake. They try to respond. Yes, they trade back onto Dawn, but there's not much else they can do. They're routed out of the top lane, routed out of top jungle, and could find themselves in even more trouble here. Yeah, Enzo gets taunted, but Rex not able to get much damage. Of course, we mentioned Braum right beside him puts up the shield, able to eat up the Q from the Galio. And Liab, unfortunately, from there, won't be able to get much else and actually might find themselves in some trouble as the teleport came in from now on. Teleport, though, will be used immediately by Kanji to equal out the fight. Rex wanted to engage, but maybe a little too far forward. Goes into stasis. Doido, though, jumps in immediately onto the graves, tries to take down Enzo, and he shall. But Rex will be traded back for his life. It's a one-for-one one on both sides. Credit to Doido for trading that into a one-for-one, one, just getting that solo kill onto Enzo on the side of that fight. You see Bajaya split just that little bit and that's where the Nidalee thrives. You find a pick, you find a kill, and yes, while Liab do lose their mid laner, it's fine. They get the winning play, they get somewhat punished for it, but they still trade back. Momentum continuing to swing in favor of Liab this game. They saw there, we take a look back onto the replay. Kanji able to get that nice parry onto the Skyrim of the Week, but unfortunately, uh, was still not able to secure the kill. Rex, though, was able to pick it up, though, himself. They take down Malon, and for Liab, these skirmishes, this is kind of where we've seen this team excel before we get into the nasty 5v5s, like you mentioned later on. Yeah, definitely do to look at Liab as having to play the map just that little bit harder than Berjaya. Nidalee as a champion really struggles to 5v5 because she's insanely squishy, has a lot of commitment to do, and yeah, while you can sustain your team and poke from a distance, it's not going to do much when the entire enemy squad are in your face. Uh, looking at how Liab played this one out... Okay, that was a scary Nidalee pounce, but uh... Yeah, we take those for Liab, and Berjaya now need to win this and cement themselves as a playoffs contender. Still though, you gotta finish it off, and as far as things go, the game still relatively even. We've yet to see what we call the backbreaker for Liab, where the team fight they just try and take over an odd objective ends up going completely south, and they find themselves down four to 5,000 gold off the tail end. We've still not seen that true 5v5 yet to take place, but we should see it soon with the Baron being available, as well as now next Dragon will be spawning in the next minute. Yeah, and with that mid lane tier 1 having been cracked open by the repeated Herald uh, sieges, 
what feels like ages ago for the side of Bishaya, you're expecting more aggressive picks with Syndra QEs, with Ash Arrows, with all of that good stuff, and yet Liab still managed to pull them around the map and still managed to have the better rotations when it comes to really setting up for these plays. Uh, huge commitment on bot side vision from the side of Bajaya suggests that Ocean Drake is gonna be the objective they focus on, while Liab just take full control of that top half of the map. So you do see there, at least Rex trying to get some pressure in himself. You see Ozzy though looking to respawn and a little bit of a lull here, but still 30 seconds onto the next dragon. Some pings coming out from both Liab and Berjaya looking to try and set up vision. Liab a little bit late to this party and does mean that they will have to be kind of scouting in very shortly as there you go, Mocha gets caught out. In comes that Galio ultimate though, immediately in response. Can Rex actually find himself a good taunt? No, that's not going to be the case. And now Dawn is caught out himself, going to go taken down into the Death Realm. Actually able to sidestep away from the collateral damage. Will he last long though? That's not going to be the case as he falls through. And now Rex over toward the side ends up getting unleashed power upon. But Kanji now has re-entered the fight. Chelly is still going to get taken on down. Dodo into the 1v1. He's able to find it. He goes golden. And Liab still strike back two for three in their favor. And Bajaya kite out the engage. They kite out the counter engage. They kite out the Galio ult, the Pantheon stun, all of that good stuff. And yet Liab are the ones that walk away with a victory and should walk away pushing Bajaya to Dragon Soul Point. And some step ups were needed. Doi Doi now 5 1 and 6 on this Nilly. Kanji now been rejoining into the fights. This Fiora has started to come online, and what looks like a scary situation for Liab, they are able to turn around. I'm like, why are you trying to team fight with the Fiora? And yet, cool, it works out. You collapse Kanji here. He finds backline access because the fight is so split. Azzy just on the 1v5 Crusade, yes? He gets Dawn, but at what cost? The fight is so chaotic. K2 is alone against a fairly formidable Nidalee here, who was 4-1-4 and four leading into this fight. And Berjaya, they fall apart in the chaos. Their mobile carries are picked off. And right now, Liab firmly back in control. And this gets rather scary now for Berjaya when it comes to the side lane, because now this Fiora, we said she's going to take a little bit to get ahead. Well, now... Got that Trinity Force, has that Hydra completed as well, in prime position to be uh, a pretty big nuisance for Ozzy in a side lane. Yeah, definitely do have to look at that 1v1 from the Fiora and the uh, the Mordekaiser, but also think about the fact we've seen Rex unafraid to take his position in a side lane time and time again. Just push out the waves from a distance. Uh, at this point, I think the Galio can actually withstand the Syndra Burst, especially with that Hourglass coming back up soon. And that's why you see it necessary for Enzo to actually shadow his solo laners in these 1v1 scenarios. So now vision game going to become paramount for both of these squads. Is Don getting a little bit too close for comfort onto this jungle? You do see Chili makes his way on over. True Shot Barrage is going to go ahead. Spots out Enzo as well. But Don with a nice little cheeky steal off there with the Mystic Shot. is able to net that for himself. But still uh, a little bit risky that you're even fighting for a red buff like this with no vision. I feel really bad for Chili. Um, actually, just imagine sitting back for most of the split and then making your return on Braum. Really hard to stand out. And I think that's where we have to really look at his vision control as being the litmus test for if this was a good decision by Vijaya or not. You mentioned the, the Baron's the hot point of contention, and yet Vijaya have just ceded all sort of control around that point of the map and now looking to collapse on Kanji, but it opens up the Baron as a power play point. Now that's the question though, does Lia pull the trigger to go for a Baron knowing that this bot side is preoccupied? And the answer is no. This is something that has happened before with this team. Instead, they opt to take the first tier tower in mid instead. I think that's actually the better decision to make. It's really difficult to force Baron when you haven't taken that tier one mid. Now, if that play happens again, they can go for the Baron. They just needed that mid push. They needed that tier one down and they needed map pressure before Kanji can move like this. Cause you know, Bajaya reset, you know, Bajaya recalled, you know, this 1v1 isn't necessarily a 1v1 and up. Oh. Looks like a pick there was coming out from the side of Rajaya, but a flash on forward from Rex decks himself into a three-man taunt. Able to get some damage, but has to go and stopwatch immediately. Still waiting. Kanji was already still in the gray screen from before. Has teleport available. 
But Rajai are going to be able to disengage here off the engage coming out from Rex. Yeah, a little bit rough for the side of Liao because you look at Nidalee, you look at Ezreal and you think, okay, poke from a distance, siege, poke, 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 poke. And yet you have an aggressive front line between Galio, Pantheon, and to a lesser extent Fiora, who's glued to a side lane right now, rightfully so. And they just want to get in the skirmish. They want to get in the fight. They want to actively just 5v5, fight, 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 while Nidalee and Ezreal desperately try and dish out damage from a distance. So now we go back into this Baron play where it comes down to a, a surprising lack of vision from Berjaya, only needing the bare minimum, it seems. Same on the side, though, of Liap. As like you mentioned, Kanji's is going to go back into this bot lane, try and exert some pressure, still waiting for that death stance to get completed. But now, 40 seconds, Liab at soul point. Berjaya have to respond to this, and Kanji already getting prio via bot. Yeah, I was about to slam the Vijaya carries for being allergic to pink wards here, but then they got their reset, uh, filled up their inventories, and now look for Vijaya to actively contest for vision. However, remarkably easy for Liab to find a pick, or some decent poke, and just naturally force Vijaya off of this big objective. Yeah, you saw there, Dodoy got a really cheeky back and has actually finished off his QSS, so we'll have that for this ensuing fight if he gets tanked up by Chili on this Braum, as well as if he gets brought into the death round by Ozzy. You see Liab, they want to try and find their fight in their favor. True Shot Barrage ends up cutting through Berjaya. It's a little bit late, but in comes a re-engage from the Pantheon. Ozzy caught out toward the side, might be taken off down, goes for the death round. Meanwhile, Berjaya, they're funneled back up into the jungle of Liab. Malon got to be careful. Mocha's able to survive, and there isn't even a kill coming on back. Malon, though, wants to go for the reset. In comes Rex with the hero's entrance, able to find a two-man knockup. Doi Doi, though, gets taken on down, and Dawn needs to do something, but Kanji needs to be the one to bring back the fight. You still have not seen this. Ozzy! Ezreal do a single thing, as Ozzy is able to just clean up the back line with a triple kill. Yeah, this Mordekaiser goes crazy. He engages the fight, he stays alive in the death realm, and he finds kills left and right. The issue for Lee up there was that Galio alone was zoning out the enemy team. He was keeping them split around that wall. And yet the moment he commit his ultimate, the moment he peeled out of that choke point, it let the Lee backline back into the fight and it let Sorry, it let the Bejaya backline back into the fight, and it let Liab just get knocked down an insane amount. The nice. Galio did so much work and then threw everything away. So in you go, you have Mocha with that engage, and for me, my main targets I was watching was Dawn here on this Ezreal, because that is your other source of damage, but if he keeps getting zoned apart here, especially like you mentioned by Ozzy, who's just running interference with three members, there's nothing this Ezreal can do. Yeah, and the fact that Galio moved out of that sweet spot where he was keeping Syndra and Graves out of the fight by himself meant that Bajaya got the collapse, they got the peel around, they got the power play, and it meant that Bajaya could just watch as their top laner goes crazy on the Iron Revenant. Mordecai is massive at this point. We said he was the king of 1v1s. Well, now he's the king of team fighting too, apparently. And now that Mordekaiser comes back online, getting that massive injection of gold. Going to act into that side lane, likely going into that Nasher's Tooth for his fourth item or looking to finish off his Bramble upgrade. But now for Liab, you had that opening. You've seen these team fights go each way, and you've seen what has caused it to fail. My question for them is, what are they looking for? What is their opening now that the fact that Brzeia has been able to kind of put them back into their place? Bank on the fact that Kanji will carry you. If you let this Fiora split push, you need to pressure objectives on the other side of the map. Instead, you now have Rex shadowing his Fiora from melee range, looking for a very swift Galio ultimate if there's any kind of engage. But uh, I don't know if this is the power play we were looking to make, Liab. Uh, Cause you see, you have both members with teleport into a side lane, sure, maybe that's what you want to do, but Death Realm, and we've seen Kanji uh, fail when it comes to actually executing on that play to parry away the Death Realm, as uh, sure you might be able to get one thing back, but then you lose both your members with teleport in a fight bot lane. And due to repeated skirmishing, it means Rex isn't quite level 16 yet, so no additional range, can't ult bot from mid, uh, and it does mean that, yeah, cool. Fishing for melee ults seems to be the play to make. 
But you see that, you show your two main members on the side of Liab, that front line like you mentioned, and Brzeia, they can look to try and set up plays on toward the top side of the map. True Shot Barrage only just checking to see if the Baron is being started, and Liab have conceded full control of the top side jungle. Yeah, Bajai just choking out Vision in that upper quadrant because, as you mentioned, the solo laners have Liab on the bottom half of the map. Still solid Vision setup here from Liab, credit to Mocha and the rest of the gang. Can they respond though? Here we go, Rex is now rejoined in, teleport is going to be played, and this is when Kanji needs to join in. You gotta get in there, Kanji, his teleport is super late, Ozzy onto the back line, he's just going to cause mayhem, Rex though was able to fight it, in comes Kanji though, on the Fiora, and it's a double kill for Rex on the Galio. Ozzy gets himself back over to safety, but for how long, because over the wall they go, shut down to Doi Doi, Liab with full control on the map. Doi Doi and Rex with the casual 2v8 in that fight. The Galio was huge. The Nidalee damage to boot. Everything goes by way of Liab despite the delayed TP, despite the lack of vision. And Liab win that team fight, taken in him and could very well take this game. And Liab, their playoff soap relied on them taking home the victory up against Berzaya. The ace is there and this team says now or never as they push in onto the Nexus Towers. K2 is up, Bowon is up, but it's too late, and Liab still have a chance for playoffs. And Berzaya Dragons now find themselves in the very same position Liab were in heading into this one. They need a victory in that next game. They need to hammer home their playoffs seed. Otherwise, this entire lower end of the playoffs bracket can just explode the last two games of tomorrow are gonna tell you exactly who makes it into playoffs or not again Berzaya, they could completely wipe any progress made though by liab if they are able to upset psg later today so there is still that opportunity liab it's not fully in their hands. Berjaya at any point, if they get one win, can easily just dash the hopes of Liab. But now Liab, if you're a fan, you barely had any hope coming in last, but now there's a little bit there and that's all they have to hold on to. Yeah, definitely do look to this Liab roster is feeling pretty happy with themselves, bouncing back from a insane, uh, dismantling earlier today. Mm -hmm. Let's let's be real, that was not pretty by any means. And yet they, they weather this storm, they play a solid comp, they again experiment with some crazy 1-3-1s, but still pull it back when it comes to team fighting. And that good decisive call to end, rather than commit for a Baron or just take mid and hit and peel off, very, very promising from a team that has looked a little bit all over the place when it comes to making one clear coherent decision. And it comes back to kind of some of these drafts where it's like, Liab, just throw all your members into the fight, see what happens, it ends up working off here. And even like we mentioned with a slightly delayed TP, I was maybe hoping for it, but they wanted to make sure Rex got that engage. Yeah, so I said actually this was uh, Rex and Doi Doi 2v8, but that was actually just Rex 1v9. The Galio came up so huge. Baron helped out a little bit as well, but so much went by way of Rex there. Backline access on the Galio, frontline access on the Galio. It was all beautiful for him, but someone else got an insane early game for themselves with 100% skill participation. Yeah, Captain Doi Doi, you could call him, needed to step up today and they were able to take down the much needed match in their favor up against Perjaya. Takes home the MVP as well on the Nidalee, so congratulations to him as well as the rest of the Liab crew. But again, they're still going to be glued to their monitors when it comes to the rest of the games today, as again, their fate could easily get diminished with one victory from Perjaya either today, tonight up against PSG, or tomorrow up against Nova. Yeah, nerve-wracking for Liab here, and as I mentioned earlier, even if all the stars align for the rest of today, it's going to come down to those last two games tomorrow. We have a Bajaya game, and then we have a Liab game rounding out the second round Robin, rounding out the regular season uh, of summer here. And honestly, it's down to the wire for these two teams.
Yeah, of course, though, we still have those two games left to play today. And next one up is going to be Taipei J Team taking on Alpha Esports, which Alpha themselves still nestled in nicely. But Taipei J Team on the brink of losing that first seed if they drop any games here today or tomorrow, depending on how their matches go, could easily drop from first all the way down to fourth in the standings before playoffs. We're going to go ahead and take a short break and we come back at that matchup right away. CDBC Bank is Taiwan's top financial institution, but we're not stopping there. We're crafting an international brand and already have over 260 outlets in 14 countries. We are by your side, ready to embrace the future. <laughs> 